Hi, today we're going to do pseudocode lesson two. You should already know what from lesson one, um, the beginning of a program, program, program name, and then end. Um, how to do input, we yes, usually say input and put a variable name. If how to do output, we just say output and we put the data to in output. Not that special words are always in capitals, the words that we use again and again. Then you should also know how to do an if statement. You've got if, then the test, for example, is A equal to B. We have the then statement, which is indented here. And then what you do when the if is true is also indented, but even further, the else is also indented and in line with the then. And then we have what to do when the if is false, also indented. So that was in pseudocode lesson one, if you want to look at that again. So today we're going to learn about for loops. So this is the general way a for loop looks. We would have for, then a variable. Um, we'll speak about that just now. And then we've got the arrow, which means as the assignment arrow. And then we would put a value, value one to value two. So this is what we're going to count from. Say we put one for value one and 10 for value two. We would count from one to 10 as we repeat whatever is in the middle here, what to repeat in the loop. And then at the bottom of the loop, we would put next. And remember that that needs to be neatly lined up with the four and the whatever you want to repeat in the loop, even if it's many lines, must always be indented. Sometimes you want to step by more than one. Usually you count in ones, but sometimes you want to count in twos or threes, and then you put the words step and then whatever value you want to add every time you go around the loop. Here's an example of how a for loop operates. The problem is, write pseudocode to print a block 10 stars by 10 stars. The program runs like, looks like this, program star block, for count, assign one to 10. Output, and we've got 10 stars there, and then next, and then end. So let's look at count, this variable in the for loop, and see how it changes as the for loop operates. So the first time we go into the loop, we'll say for count assign one to 10. So count will get the value one. We then do output and we output the 10 stars. So we get our first row of stars. We say next. And so we go back to the top of the loop and count goes to two. We then say output and the 10 stars, so we get the next 10 stars. We say next, go back to the top of the loop, and for count gets 1 to 10, so we will change the 2 will become 3, and so on all the way up to 10. When count becomes 10, we then again output the 10 stars. So we'll have output all the lines up to here. We output the 10 stars and then next. So we go back to the top of the loop and what happens is count actually becomes 11. So that changes to 11. But that is bigger than the limits of the loop. The loop only goes to 10. So now the loop actually stops operating and we would go to whatever statement. If there were more statements over here after the loop, we would carry on running those. And that is how a loop operates. Um, if you look at exactly what is happening with the count variable. Your turn to practice. Um, you need to write pseudocode to print a block of five hashes by five hash. And you can call the program hash block. Please pause the video now. I'm going to show you the solution on the next slide. Important for you to practice this, as I said last lesson, because 
um, this is how you get to know exactly how to make a loop look, exactly where to put the value and the, the counter and etc. So please try it out for yourself now. The solution looks like this. We have program hash block. We've got four. There's our variable count. And we go the, we put the arrow and we're going to count from one to five and output five hash symbols every time we go around the, the loop. Then we go next and end for the end of the program. Um, another example, if we wanted to print a row of at signs where the number of ats is decided by the user. For example, in the top at the in the top block here, we say the user wants eight at symbols. This is what it would look like. So we've got program at block, input the number of ats, so your user can say how many ats he wants. Then we go for count goes from one, two, and instead of putting 10 or five, or whatever here, we have put a variable number of ats. Number of ats is storing how many ats your user wants. And then we would put output and we put the at sign in quotes. No new line. We don't want a new line. Usually when we do output, it automatically puts a new line. This time we do not want a new line. Um, we're going to print the next at next to this one. And we go next. And when the for loop has finished, we go output new line and end. Your turn to practice. Write pseudocode to print woof a number of times. This number, so the number of times, must be inputted by the user and call the program woofs. Please pause the video here and I'm going to show you the solution on the next slide. So program woofs, input number woofs, four count going from one to number woofs, output woof, and no new lines so that the woofs all land up in a neat line. And then next, and at the bottom of just before the end statement, we've got output new line and end. There's another example, print all the even numbers from two to 20 using a for loop. So this is what it would look like, 2, 4, 6, 8, all the way to 20. And we've specified you must use a for loop because you could just print this and hard code the 2 to 20. That's not the point. We want you to practice your for loops. So program even numbers, we've got four count. We've got our arrow to assign the value 2 to 20. We're counting from 2 to 20. And instead of going, the, the default is to step in ones. This time we've got step two, output count and next, and then end. So every time we go around the for loop here, we're going to add two to the count variable. So we'll go two plus two is four plus two is six, etc., until we get to 20. An example for you to practice, um, write pseudocode to print all multiples of five from zero to a hundred using a for loop called the program multiples five. Please try this out for yourself. Very important to practice. Please pause the video here while you practice and I will show you the solution now. So program multiples five four count, we've got the arrow from zero to a hundred, step five, output count, and then next, and then end. Another exercise, write pseudocode to print all multiples of three going backwards from 30 to zero. Call the program multiples three. So you're going to have to think cleverly about the limits of your for loop in this one. Please pause the video and I will now show you the solution. So it just looks like this program multiples three, four count, arrow, 
we're going to count from 30 to 0 and step minus 3 every time we go around the loop. Output count, next and end. Exercise 5, program positive negative. Write pseudocode to input 20 numbers. If a number is positive, then output positive, otherwise output negative. We already did this if statement in the previous video. So if, please try it on your own. I'm going to show you the solution now. Program positive negative. We put a for loop for count from 1 to 20 input number and then we do the if statement. So these lines of code were all done before. All we had to do is put them into inside the for loop and then this part will repeat 20 times. Exercise 6, program whole numbers. Write pseudocode to input 20 numbers. Output how many of these numbers were whole numbers or integers. You may use int x in your answer. For example, y equals int 3.8 gives the value y equal to 3. So if x equals int x is true, then x is a whole number. So you can use that in your solution. Please pause the video now while you do the, your solution and I will show you mine now. So program whole numbers, four counts going from one to 20, input number, if number equals int, and then we've got the number in brackets, remember that converts the number to an integer, just con chops off anything behind the decimal point. So um, we've got the then, we would output the number is a whole number, else we would output the number is not a whole number. We've got end if, next and end, all very neatly lined up. The for and the next are lined up, and program and end are lined up, and everything inside is indented neatly. So here you can clearly see that all these lines of code are going to be repeated inside the for loop. So the indentation makes it nice and clear that that is what's going to happen. Um, and here's an example for extension. In a certain epidemic, each person infects two people per day on average. The epidemic starts on day one with one sixth person. Input the day number on which you want to know the number of sick people. Calculate the number of people who will be sick after the number of days inputted and output this and call the program epidemic. Solution coming up now. Program epidemic. Newly sick is one. We start with one person sick and one person as the total of sick people. We input the number of days. Then four count, we're going to go from two to number days. Newly sick equals newly sick times two. Remember we said that the number of sick people doubles every day. And then we add the newly sick to total sick. So total sick equals total sick plus newly sick. And we go next. And then we will have calculated the number of sick people by the end and we output total sick and end. Another example for extension, write pseudocode to print a table showing the growth of an investment. The investment is rate is 5% and the starting balance is 10,000. Input the number of years over which the investment will run. You need to output the year and the balance of the investment for each year that the investment runs. So we've got program, table investment, rate equals 5, balance equals 10,000, input number years, for year from 1 to number years, interest equals balance times rate divided by 100. That's to work out the interest for one year. Balance equals balance plus interest. So the balance is going to increase by the amount of interest. 
output year, output balance, and next, and then end. And that's it for today, and I hope you found this helpful. Goodbye.